In this video, we're going to look at the DeepSeq R1, May 28th updated version of the DeepSeq R1 model. We can look into what makes it so special. We can look into some function calling using the DeepSeq API. And we're also going to get into JSON output or structured output using the DeepSeq R1 using a VLM based inference on a free Google Colab notebook. Now, what's so special about this model? Well, this just got released. This is the updated version of the really famous DeepSeq R1 model that crashed many different NVIDIA stocks and lost people a lot of money. But nevertheless, this is currently competing with OpenAI's O3 and 4O model, if I'm not completely wrong. But nevertheless, it still has the 685 billion parameter model, but they're also given us a Quen 3 8 billion version of the model of this of the DeepSeq R1 version. So the thing that is special about this is it has improved benchmark performances, which you guys can go into more in details. I'm sure many people are talking about this on the internet already. Enhanced front-end capabilities, reduced hallucinations according to them, and finally, this supports JSON output and function calling out of the bat. And we're gonna see how to exactly use that in this video. Now, as mentioned, this will be broken down into three different sections. We're gonna install the packages, do some function calling and JSON output. So the first thing that you guys will need to do is install VLLM and bits and bytes. And we are going to download a chat template for tool calling. So this will download the chat template that will bring out from here specifically. Now, of course, we are going to do function calling using the API, but we are also going to show you guys how to do JSON output or how to even make inferences using a VLLM based local DeepSeq R1 0.528 version. Now, let's see how we can actually get this model up and running. So the first thing that we will do is actually write VLLM serve on sloth version of the Quen 3 DeepSeq R1, the updated version that is actually quantized. The reason why we're picking this is because we want to run this model in a T4 GPU. Now over here, we are running a T4 GPU, as we can see from here. And with that, we're going to define the dtype auto and set up the API key. We are going to run max model length to 5000. And then we're going to define some extra parameters such as enable auto tool choice, tool call, parser, Hermes, and pass in the chat template that we downloaded right now. Now, of course, I actually did have problems with enabling the tool calling over here, but nevertheless, this is an experiment that you guys may try in the future, but I'm going to keep this here for now. And then at the end, we're going to run no hop. So we can run this in the background while we're executing other functions. So let's run that. So this will take some time. So please be patient. Now, while that is up and running and downloading in your local environment in Google Colab Notebook, feel free to go ahead and set up an API key. This API key will be used to do our function calling very, very soon. Now, don't worry. We are going to use this locally running model for our JSON output later on. But for function calling, I found that using the API was the best and easiest way to set things up. So in the meantime, let's get along with the function calling. So over here, I've set up, I'm going to set up the DeepSeq API key over here. So over here, I've set up the DeepSeq API key over here. Now we can finally get along with building the function calling. So first thing that we will do is actually define a function, the function that we want to use for a model to use. So over here, I have a weather function that's gonna fetch the weather based upon a specific location I pass in, in a specific unit. And after that, we're going to instantiate our DeepSeq reasoning model or the DeepSeq 0528 model. To do that, we're going to import OpenAI, import JSON and import Google Colab user data, which will fetch our API key. Once that is passed over here, we're also gonna define the base URL to api.deepseq.com. And after that, we're going to define some tooling information. So because we defined the function that we want the model to use, we're going to pass in some metadata about this function. And this should look something along the lines of this. Now that has been executed. Now we can pass that along to our model or the client. So we're going to pass in the model as deep seek reasoner. As of 31st of May, 2025, this refers to this specific deep seek R1 version of the model. Of course, this can be changed in the future, but for now it is using the latest R1 model that we want. So let's run that. So the main idea is once we pass in a question, like what's the weather like in Stockholm, it's gonna pass in the city name to the function over here. 
and with the appropriate, appropriate parameters like Celsius or Fahrenheit. And then it is going to get the response. Now this response, just to observe what it looks like, it has a lot of different information over here, but the main idea is it's supposed to tell us which function name to use and what the parameter for the function is supposed to be passed in. So it should look something along the lines of this. What we need to do is extract this and pass it into our function. And for that, I've made a code over here. It's going to get the function name, get the parameters we want, and pass it in just like so. And there you have it. The function called getWeather, which is true. The arguments are passed in like so. And now we have the answer. So real-time response from a function. And that's the beautiful part about function calling. Now, before we start going into the JSON output, let's see what our local model is looking like right now. So currently, the model is being loaded in a local environment. So all we have to do is just wait a bit. Okay, after quite some time, the model will be loaded in your local environment. And once that happens, you guys can inspect it in the nohop out logs over here. So the first thing you guys will have to do is initialize the OpenAI client again, but this time using the base URL as a localhost 8000 v1, and then you pass in the API key, like so, if you guys remember that we did earlier over here. We pass in the key token ABC123. Now over here, we also pass in the max model length 5000. This can be bigger or smaller, depending on how big of a GPU you're using. But for a T4, I've passed in around 5000. Now let's initialize that. And to get our JSON output, we're going to define a system prompt. This system prompt will specifically say how the JSON output will look like. We can write question and an answer like so. We're going to pass in a user prompt. So we can write what is which is the longest river in the world. And then we're going to pass in it as a array of different messages for system and user. And then we're finally going to get the output through the client. We're going to pass in the model as the Unsolved DeepSeek R1, Quen 3 version, and type JSON object. And there we go. Which is the longest river in the world? Answer is the Nile River. All right. And there we go. This is how to make function calling and JSON output using a DeepSeq R1 0528 version, the latest DeepSeq R1 model. All right, guys, hope you found this video insightful. If you guys did, please feel free to subscribe. I make similar videos like these. All right, guys, hope to see you in my next video. Have a nice day.